We're with Kerry Buchanan and Drew Kavar, a couple of the captains on the Eastern Connecticut swim program. Eastern getting ready for its season opener on October 22nd. They'll be at the St. Joseph uh, Blue Jay Pentathlon. Um, guys, you guys have been practicing just about a month. It'll, I think it'll be a month tomorrow. Uh, Carrie, you've been through it before, but how'd the preseason go this year? Maybe your last preseason, <laughs> possibly. The preseason has gone very well so far. We've been working hard in the pool. We've been working hard in the weight room. We have a strong class of freshmen that came in, and they're showing a great strength in the pool. And it'll be interesting to see how they swim um, in the coming days. But it's a very, very young team. I mean, you've got the. I think you've got like 16 freshmen and sophomores. Oh yeah. Right, but they have potential. Definitely. Good, good talent. Yes, definitely. Drew, how did it go with you? This was really your first official preseason because of COVID last year. Things yes. were cut short. But how did it go for you coming out of high school? You went to East Catholic. How did? What was the differences? Um, well, it was a lot more high stakes, I think. Um, the transition from high school swimming to college swimming and I think the COVID season we sort of had last year was definitely great for me to transition me from a high school swimmer into a college swimmer um, so I'm really grateful for the experience we had last year and um, its effect on getting me ready for the season this year sort of a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Um, and we talked about this off camera, but um, talk about how you ended up at Eastern. Well, <laughs> it's a long story, but um, I started off swimming at East Catholic. Um, I swam at East Catholic all four years, but the first two years I had Coach Dan as Furman. my coach. Yes, yes. Coach uh -huh. Dan Furman. Go ahead, yep. Um, and he was a great coach. Um, he still is a great coach. <laughs> Um, but yeah, when I was at East Catholic, I swam with him, and he left for th my third and fourth year, and but my but my fourth year, oh, yeah, yeah, he went to EO Smith. Yeah. But my fourth year, I had a different coach, Coach Rob Ensling, and he mm -hmm. was great too. But um, Coach Dan came back, and he said, um, "You guys remember me? <laughs> I was your coach <laughs> forget you know, two years ago, and you know when I was a senior and." Um, he was passing out cards to all the uh, potential swimmers uh, that he could have uh, on his team at Eastern. And I looked at it and I said, you know, <laughs> this is just the right path for me. And um, here I am today and it's great. You, what, what might you have done for college if Dan hadn't come along? Well, I think I still would have went to either UConn or Eastern, maybe. I don't know how um, influenced I'd be to join the actual swim program, mm -hmm. but having Dan here and just having that familiarity with him, um, it definitely was a big driver in my decision to continue swimming uh, here at Eastern. Well, when they talked about them starting a men's program, in the back of your mind, you're going, I'm not sure if I want to go somewhere where, like, there's no history of a program. Yeah, it wasn't really established. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I was really considering Eastern in the first place mm -hmm. um, because I had other reasons to go here. But mm -hmm. um, I think having the swim program here, it gave me something to... Um, prospect towards you know see mm -hmm. maybe maybe this could be great and maybe I could um, contribute to it and be um, you know a positive team player and you know make some friends on the way and I have done that and I'm grateful that I've done that that's what it's all about yeah. Carrie we didn't we never really talked about like when you came in as a freshman you graduated in 2017 right um, from Southington, we didn't, I never really asked you and talked about how you ended up here. I was looking at colleges outside of Connecticut at first. I knew that I wanted to swim, um, and Eastern was the, actually the last college that I looked at. And I was in contact with Maureen Fahey, mm -hmm. and she came to one of my high school meets. She watched me swim, she was impressed. I came for um, a tour with the assistant coach, Amy, and 
once I stepped on campus and saw the atmosphere and I got to meet some of the team, I knew that this was the place for me to go. Well, when you came in your first year, that this that program, the program was very strong because you had the three last door girls, yes, right? Sir. And talk about, uh, can you talk a little bit about how you got from your freshman year to here and the things, the obstacles that you've overcome to get to this point to be a fifth year senior? <laughs> it's definitely been a lot. I was not able to compete my the second half of my freshman year and all of my sophomore year due to not having the GPA that I needed to compete according to NCAA. And I had to work really hard in school and study, study more, focus more on classes rather than hanging out with friends. And sleeping was another big factor that I picked. Usually up. is. Yeah. Um, so it's been a lot. And when I had the opportunity to come back and swim and reaching out to Suri was very anxiety inducing because I wasn't sure if she was going to have me back with the history of how I did in school. Um, but she took a chance on me, and I met with her every week to make sure that I was on top of my schoolwork. And I'm very grateful that she gave me the chance to still be here five years after coming here. Well, how difficult was that? You came in under Maureen Fahey, swam mm -hmm. a couple of years, and then a new coach comes in with a new philosophy. Mm -hmm. Was it a, a quick adjustment for you? I think so. I went in with, with an open mind, knowing that it wasn't going to be the same training yeah. that I had originally received. Um, I also wasn't in the pool a lot before I swam with Sri. I maybe swam that summer beforehand, but I took about a year off from swimming. Um, so it was scary at first, too, again, with like having an open mind, but it ended up working out. and. I enjoy her coaching style and the way that things have worked out for the program itself since she came here. But after taking a year and a half off, how long did it take you to get back to where you wanted to be? It actually happened very fast. Did it? Yes. Uh, one of the practices that we had, we raced the 100. I went a 59 in my first like 100 race, but it was in a practice after being out for so long. You still had it. Yes, <laughs> I didn't lose anything apparently, yeah. <laughs> Drew, talk about what the adjustment from high school, in other words, uh, the season in high school is probably a couple of months and you swim in the winter. Um, uh, is it going to be difficult? This is an extended, the tough part I think about swimming season is that you do the preseason, then you, then you swim a couple of meets, and then you get a lot of time off, mm -hmm. right? And then you've got to get back into it again. Mm -hmm. How difficult is that long, what is it like a five month season? How long? How difficult is it to maintain focus and everything else? I guess you don't know because you haven't really done it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's not, this is the first real college season yeah. that I have. Um, so, so I don't really know um, what to expect. Maybe Carrie can answer. Yeah, yeah she might be able yeah. to help you. <laughs> yeah. Um, How do you maintain focus in with, with such a long season? <laughs> it's definitely not easy. Um, going from practicing from September until about the beginning of December, and then we go on break for winter break. But while a lot of people are home on winter break, we come back in January before school even starts. And then we practice for a few days sometimes before we go on our training trip like we did two years ago. And this year will be different because we will be coming back on January 5th and then going on our training trip and then coming back to compete um, in our meet on January 12th. It's, it's very difficult. Yes. And then having, having to hold yourself accountable during those three weeks that we aren't here. Because yeah. yeah. uh, it yeah. can be detrimental if you're not doing anything during that time period, like swimming or lifting or just keeping up on like what you've been doing and training for for the past few months. Your progress won't disappear, but it's definitely like something to hold yourself like up to. Because you're on your own, basically. Oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. You are held accountable. Yeah. Um, Drew, talk a little bit about um, Carrie is a distance freestyler, and then you will be a free. How did it work? How did it transition for you? Because you were doing sprints, and now you're back as, <laughs> as, uh, yeah. as distance. Yeah. So 
I started off my college experience swimming sprint freestyle. Um, it was different in high school. I did all distance events, but I said uh, for my first year of college, you know, it's going to be kind of easy because we're only swimming one meet. So mm. I'm just going to take it easy and I swim for sprint free. I did do a couple distance events, um, but I wasn't really training for distance events. But this year, and the reason why I made the transition this year to do um, distance events is because Coach Dan, <laughs> he was on my back this year, and he was all of last year too, but I wasn't listening to him. But <laughs> this year it finally clicked, and I was like, I really should be doing distance events, you know? That's kind of what I've been working towards, you know, my entire high school season or my entire high school, you know, the four seasons mm -hmm. I've been swimming in high school. So, um, yeah, I'm ready to swim distance this year, and it's going to be great. <laughs> what do you guys, what do you have for goals? I'll ask both of you that, and this will be the last question. What do you guys have goals for yourself and as well as for the team? Well, for myself, <laughs> and I um, texted my coach this last night, but my goals, my personal goals, isn't necessarily to do um, like stuff in the pool, stuff um, sort of meet events. One of the things we do at the end of the, well, we did this at the end of the year last year is the swimathon, where we swim um, 200 laps. That's the amount that they, um, they suggest, 200 laps in two hours. Um, my personal goal for this year, and it's going to be a continuous thing next year and my senior year, is to get more and more laps in that small window or that large window of two hours. <laughs> and last year I swam 300 laps in two hours. This oh. year I'm going for 360 laps in two hours, which is a 80. 85 second interval or something so mm -hmm. I have personal goals um, for me um, but for team goals it's obviously to win the most meets as we can this is only the third year of the program correct right so talk a little we're gonna go back to Carrie in a second about goals but talk about uh, you, you came in there was about four or five six swimmers now you're up to ten can this be is it too soon to think that you guys can be somewhat competitive at a certain level? No, I think I think we can still definitely be competitive with the numbers we have. It's just, um, you know, just because we don't have all of the numbers, just because we're not maxed out in mm. terms of roster, yeah. doesn't mean we can't do our best and win meets. I think with the people, with the numbers we have, it's sufficient. And with the quality of the people that we have on the team, I think victory is definitely attainable. How about the women's program? You've been here when they were very, very strong and now they, Sarit came in and started to build it back up. Yep. What are the, does the team have uh, definitive goals as well as, in, as well as the individuals? Oh, absolutely. Yes, we are a lot bigger than we were yeah, a couple a of years roster. ago. Um, we now have 22 yep. women and we are all very strong when it comes to how we're gonna swim this year and even into the future. I know this is my last year here, but I can't wait to see what the team does in the coming years. Well, you've had a, you've had a great career. What would it take for you really to like to put the icing on the cake for your own personal career? Uh, to break one of the records yeah. on the board. Yeah. I, know, I don't it's swim tough. necessarily to break them, mm. but to be able to say that I did yeah. would be amazing. And I'm gonna chase after those as hard as I can and put everything I got into this season just to see how I'm gonna end. Because this is my retirement season. I'm getting yeah. to the end yeah. after 15 years of swimming. So, almost there. <laughs> are they doable? Are, those, are, are, are chasing those records and possibly breaking them, is that doable? Yes. For, for a few of those records? I think so. Last year, I was very close. Yeah. I think I was two seconds off of the 200 free. Um, and I wasn't disappointed when I touched the wall and didn't see that I broke it. I was happy to be able to say that I went 
a lifetime best when we were going through a pandemic, especially with That's the season true. that we had. That's true. So. Well, guys, good luck this year. The Warriors are going to be opening up their season on October 22nd. They're going to be at the St. Joseph Relays, and then they're going to be back home on the next day, October 23rd, hosting Regis College and Stonehill College. Guys, thanks for being here. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you.